Advisor's data constellations chart is unique in its ability to show interrelationships between entities in a network. The entities could be things like departments in a large company. They could be customers with relationships between the customers. They could be website pages showing flows between them. Or they could be items purchased in a store showing affinities in market basket. It can lay out different ways. This example is a very conceptual rendering. We'll see one in a minute of a large market basket. This is a more traditional structured view uh, where there's a, maybe this is a headquarters, there's two groups, a series of departments. In each case, the nodes, uh, the circles and squares, um, can be shaped, sized, and colored by different dimensions. For example, in this one, perhaps the shape is determined by the type of department. Circles could be one type, squares another, triangles a third. Color could represent something important. For example, profit. Maybe green is high profit and red is low profit. And then the size of the nodes could be determined, for example, maybe by revenue or numbers of employees. So this can communicate a lot of information. Then the lines between the nodes represent a relationship. It could be number of contacts between two people. It could be amount of revenue uh, between uh, two units. Or it could be uh, numbers of times items in a market uh, in a store are purchased together. And then, just like the nodes, the lines can be sized by a dimension, for example, revenue, and colored by another one, for example, profit. And if there's a directionality, uh, for example, loan flows between a company, the lines can have arrows. In other cases, that may not make sense. So now let's take a look. We're going to first go to a market basket, and then we're going to look at intercompany loan flows. Uh, market basket. So here, uh, we're looking at 31,000 SKUs purchased over a period, so these are stock keeping units in a store, over a period of time. They're trying to understand how often they're purchased with other ones. So these are market baskets. So each customer purchase is recorded. And if it's got multiple things, those are noted and linked. The data constellation shows the market basket effect. Items typically purchased by themselves are arranged on the outside of this. The items that are typically purchased together are grouped in these clusters in the middle. Each node, and when I mouse over, it comes up with what it is. For example, the node I've just moused over is a SKU 61184. The bar chart at the lower left shows it's in the plumbing group. If I click on departments, the market basket will change to show the market basket impact of those departments. For example, building materials in this example has a high degree of affiliation with other, other units. So people typically buy multiple SKUs of building materials together. Lumber looks very different. High dollar value, you can see it's the second highest bar, but the lumber is typically purchased in a standalone uh, manner uh, out in this. There's very few of these market baskets where it's bought together. Electrical, it looks like more of a hybrid. Some affiliation with the other purchases, but, but far less than the building materials. So this would give you a very graphical view and understanding of the purchase affinity. Now each of these uh, market baskets can be selected. For example, if I grab electrical, I want to go in and zero in on a market basket. Let's take this one. I can select it, get rid of everything else, and let's zoom in on it. So I can actually see the electrical SKUs were purchased in some cases with lawn and garden products. Uh, that's interesting information. Now let's zoom in. I'm going to cut this for a minute. So we've now zoomed in on that particular market basket. Now let's add the labels. And this shows you the combination of uh, this group of items. It looks like about a half a dozen items. It looks like two of them. Uh, this SKU is purchased fairly often with that one. Uh, this one's purchased sometimes with this one. So you've got this mesh of affiliation here. So now we've restored all of the data in our market basket example. Let's now go and look at a intercompany loan flow example. So here we're using the data constellation on the left to look at loan flows. This is a series of transactions between entities within a variety of countries in a large global organization. We do these transactions in a number of different kinds of currencies. The biggest ones are US dollars and euros, and we're colored by the currency. There's a list of all the transactions down here. It's hard to understand uh, the flow uh, from traditional reports and charts. The data constellation, though, makes it easy to understand. Switzerland is clearly the center of operations. It's got strong flows in red, US dollars out to the United States and Spain. It's got sort of return round trip to Brazil. The United States is a strong flow of euros uh, to Luxembourg, which then come over to Spain. There's also a strong flow of British pounds in the US to the United Kingdom. 
You can also click on the currencies over here, and it'll highlight uh, where those specific currency flows are. First, the euros. Second, the U.S. dollars. And maybe third, I want to look at uh, the NOK currency to Norway. Now, I can also look at this data uh, on a data constellation. Here's laid out logically. Oftentimes, this will show the data in a really uh, intuitive way. I can also look at it on a map. So here's a global map where I'm looking at these same flows, the euro flows, which sort of quickly highlights, you know, kind of there between the U.S. and Luxembourg and some of the other European countries. U.S. dollar flows tend to be more global, uh, coming out of Switzerland uh, as the focus. And if I go back to the Norwegian currencies, there's typically a bunch of transactions, but, but they're between uh, you know, Switzerland and uh, uh, Norway. Uh, so that summarizes uh, several looks at our data constellations chart. And you can kind of let your mind wander and, and kind of imagine that this is uh, useful for not just these kinds of uh, situations, but a bunch of network uh, flow, um, security intrusion issues, relationship stuff from social networking. There's a series of different uses for a chart like this, wherever there's relationships between the data, and you're trying to understand it in a very visual way and then interact with it.